Hi, everyone. Today, we will continue what we started last week. Completion. And if you remember, we said that this is not a completion course. This is a well intervention course. But we will talk about the completion from the point of view of a well intervention. We need mainly to concentrate on the accessories that we run with the completion tubing, production tubing. And we started last session talking about the uh, anchoring device, which was the landing nipple. Then we moved to the second, to the second uh, group, which is the circulating device groups, where we discuss a little bit about the SSD and the SPM. Today, we will start talking about the third group, which is the isolation device. The word isolation blindly means packer. The main purpose of the packer is to isolate. And if we go to this, uh, if we go to this schematic, if you notice what is there, what is there? This is, this is the packer. What's below the packer? We said that it's a, it's a tailpipe. We said that the packer is the line. Anything above it, we call it top completion, which is hanged by tubing hanger. Anything below the packer, we call it bottom completion, which is the tailpipe, which is mainly a couple of joints with wire line entry guide, a couple of landing nipple, perforated joints. This is the tailpipe or the bottom completion. Who hang the bottom completion? Look. But if I ask you a question, what's the purpose of the packer? And one of the selection is to hang the bottom completion and select it, I'll give you a big zero. Because the packer is doing this as a favor. It is not in her job description to do that. The packer is to isolate. The packer is to isolate the upper casing, which is anything above the packer, from what's below. If there is no packer, then the hydrocarbon, which comes from the formation, will enter my well, and it will go, if there is no packer here, it will go all the way up here, damaging your casing. So we are protecting our upper casing from that by packer. And also, it is to isolate this upper casing from your treating fluid. What if you need to do a stimulation job that you need to pump acid? If there is no packer, then the acid that you pump in the completion tube will go, there is no restriction to go all the way up here and enter your upper casing and damage it. So in packer is to isolate that. Hanging the bottom completion, we agreed now that she is doing this as a favor because she likes you, but not in her job description. Uh, it is exactly like when I ask you, what is the purpose of the landing nipple? And then I gave you four answers to select from. And one of the answers, one of the statements, it is to correlate the depth. Then you select that. And you find that you failed in the exam because you take zero in this question. And you said, Ahmed, I am a wildlife supervisor for the past 35 years. And I am using a landing nipple to correlate my depth. I said, yes, I, I do believe in you. I do believe what you said. <laughs> but this is not the purpose of, of having a landing nipple. 
we we have a landing nipple to receive LFCD flow control devices and plugs and valves. You use it to correct the depths. She is doing that as a favor. It is not in her job description. I hope you receive my point. Go back to the packer. No question so far. This is the production tubing. This is the casing, production casing. And this is the packer, the blue color item. This is the packer that isolates the upper section from the lower section. Two main types of production packer we have. We have permanent packer and we have retrieval packer. What you see here is permanent packer. What you're going to see now in a while is the retrievable. This is the retrievable packer. Both are similar. Any packer, it consists of three main items. Body, which is yellow color. Slips, which is green, and packing element, rubber element, which is the black one. If you decide to run permanent packer, then you run it independently, which means that you run it before you run the production tubing. How, how you run it and how you set it, you have two options. Either to run it with drill pipe, so you connect it to a drill pipe and you keep connecting drill pipe till you reach the desired depths. Now you can set the packer where you will set it. In this case, you will set it hydraulically. By having a wireline plug, you run it inside the production tubing and you set it in the landing nipple below the packer. Then you apply pressure from inside the tubing on top of this plug. Till you reach the pressure, the designed pressure that unset the packer that will shear the screws, shear the pins. When the pins are sheared, these green slips will bite on the ID of the casing. And this rubber element will inflate due to temperature to, to, to make the seal. Packer is set. You have other option to run it not with a drill pipe, to run it with E-line. E-line means electric line, but we say E-line um, for easy. So we run it with E-line. So we run it with E-line all the way till the desired depths. Now you can set, now you can set it. You set it electrically. From your cabin, control cabin on the surface, you push the button. Nitrogen explosives. This will shear the pins. So the green part, which is the slips, will bite. Rubber elements will inflate due to temperature and make the seal. Uh, one day I was teaching the course and I have a couple of Lombardier engineers. And I said, when we set this packer electrically from the top, we push the bottom. So the explosive will activate. They said, no, we push two bottoms and they are right. It is not just one, it is two. Because if it is just one, you can just press it by mistake. But if you push two buttons at the same time, that means you mean it, you mean it. So they are right, actually. You push two buttons. Now the packer is set. When this packer is set, it became an integral part of the casing. You cannot retrieve it. The only way to retrieve such a packer is by milling. You mill the upper part.
this is the upper part, you mill it. Sometimes if the packer has been set for a while, we have to mill the rubber element, which is stuck sometimes. So we have to mill it as well to retrieve this part. Can I ask you a question? I said, if we need to retrieve this packer, we have to mill the upper part. Can I say we have to drill the upper part? Is there any difference between uh, drill bit and drill mill? Any idea? I'll give you half a minute to answer. No answers. <laughs> ah, I got one answer, maybe. They said, no difference. So I got an answer now that would say that there is no difference between drilling and milling. Any other ideas? I'll, uh, I'll go quickly through that. There is a difference. Uh, a drill mill, we use it when we are dealing with metals. We use a mill. But a drill bit, we use it when we deal with cement or rock. We use drill bit, not drill mill. They are different in material and in design, of course. But since this is a metal, so we use milling, not drilling. Why well, don't have such uh, communication between me and you, these, you guys? Today, you are not asking questions. Okay, let's continue. So, if you select this one, you can either set it hydraulically. In this case, you run it with drill pipe and you set it hydraulically. Or you can set it electrically by running through with E-line. Once you set it, it became an integral part of the casing. The only way to retrieve it is by milling. Now the packer is set. Before we continue, I need you to know two things. Normally, when we run a packer, we run it with the tailpipe, which is a couple of joints, including some accessories, as we discussed. This tailpipe, can the packer withstand any weight of this? Can you run a packer with a tailpipe consists of, instead of two joints, uh, consists of 15 joints, 35 joints? Can the packer withstand this? Of course not. It comes with the technical data sheet of the packer. The packer, this type of packer that you per just purchased, it can withstand uh, a weight of 100 kilograms, 1,000 kilograms, whatever. If you put excess weight, this is a big issue. Because when you run it electrically, this is the E-line. What you see here, this is the E-line. So the E-line angle, you have here the, the running tools, then you have the pack. So this E-line have the weight of the pack, the, the, the tools, the packer, the tail pack. If this E-line can not withstand the weight, what will happen to the wire? It will be elongated. It will move from the curve of, uh, if you know this stress-strain relationship diagram curve that you will pass an elastic to the plastic limit, where you will have a deformation that you cannot retain with that. So uh, you have to consider the tensile strength of this wire you are using uh, 
and the parker itself, because once you put the slips, it will withstand this weight. Can, can it hold the weight or not? So when running with Eli, you have to consider this because if you don't have, if you have excess weight, this will not let you set the parker properly. You will set it in a different depth because of the elongation of this wire. So you have to consider this. Um, maybe you, I need you to know something else that when you use the running tool to run this parker, the running tool has a device, we call it shear studs. This shear studs, it's a safety device, will not allow you to remove the running tool from the parker unless a complete set happened. Otherwise, if you remove the, the running tool before you, dig, you make complete set, the parker will fall in the open hole. So this device will prevent you from this, unless the packer is set 100%. Once you set the packer, now we are ready to run the completion. If we assume that this is the pack, which we set it inside the casing, this is the packer. Now we are running the completion. So when we run the completion, you keep going in the well. This last item in the last accessories we use in the completion, we call it tubing seal assembly. The tubing seal assembly is a pipe with a lot of external seals. So when we run this tubing seal assembly, it entered the packer and now these external seals, which outside, it seals within the bore of the packer. That's what makes the seal. This moment we call it sting in. Sting in is the moment that the tubing seal assembly enter the bore of the permanent packer. Now, now we have the tubing seal assembly. We are running the completion till we reach the top of the park. Should we go just a little bit inside? Will I go halfway? Well, of the stroke, will I go all the way in? I cannot answer you this question because I don't have enough data. You have to give me data. To this uh, you have to tell me. This will is Production, well, injection. If this well is injection well, so when I run the tubing cell assembly, I will run it all the way in. Why? Because this is an injection well, so I'll inject water. So what happened to the, the production tubing, it will shrink due to temperature. Freezing, cooling. So when it, if I put it on top, if it shrink, it will pop out from the pack. If it is all the way in, when it is shrink, when it shrinks, it will go up, but still inside the pack, it will not pop out. But if this well is production, normally we put it halfway, halfway. So during production, the pipe will be heated. So it will be elongated a little bit. So I have a space, I have a stroke that goes in and still have, there is a space to go, to move. And sometimes this length of tubing cell assembly is not sufficient. So we use another device. We put it on top of the pack. Uh, we call it, Thermal joint, expansion joint, traveling joint, which is mainly a piston and cylinder to absorb this fluctuation in length over time due to change in well temperature. Thermal joint, expansion joint, traveling joint, all the same meaning. In high pressure well, high temperature wells, normally we put it on top because 
when you start producing, the, the increase in lens will be high due to this high temperature. So you have the full stroke. So it, the pipe can move all the way in. Oh, let's move to the other type of packer. If your decision not to use a permanent packer, but to use a retrievable packer which is the same component, streaming components we agreed with. Remember, it is, the <clears throat> it is the rubber element, which is black. It is the body, which is yellow. It is the slips, green color. If you decided to run a retrievable packer, I start having questions, which means you, I'm talking so, to live people, to not dead bodies. Is there any measurements of the strain percentage of it? When you select uh, uh, when you select a wire to run the packer, well, you have to know this the, the tensile strength of this wire. It will withstand. What is the tensile strength? What is this, the tensile strength of this pipe, for example? Uh, in a very simple way, the tensile strength of the of this pipe away from the engineering. Yeah. It is the ability of the pipe to withstand its, its weight. If you are running 10,000 feet of, of drill pipe, what's holding the 10,000 feet? It is the traveling block of the rig. But just go below the traveling block. What's hold 9,990? It is the drill pipe itself. If the drill pipe cannot withstand this weight that she hold, that it hold, it will elongate and separate it. Oh, please fill the safety device. It is shear studs. Shear, S-H-E-A-R, studs, S-T-U-D-D-S, shear studs. I think uh, it is coming in the uh, presentation here. Yeah. Ah, if you decided to run the retrievable packer, then this type of packer, you run it with the completion. It is part of the completion. It is fixed to the completion. And uh, you run it with the completion till the desired depths. Now you can set it hydraulically. Same like a permanent packer, where you run a plug, inside the production tubing. Uh, you sit it in a landing nipple below the packer, and then you apply pressure from the tubing till the desired pressure that shear the sitting pins, because this packer has two types of pin. Now, by applying pressure, you will shear the sitting pins. Pins are sheared, a rubber element will inflate due to temperature and make the seal, the slips will bite in the casing to set the packer in place. Now you set it hydraulically. Some packer you can set it mechanically by rotation, uh, where that is the, the, the manufacturer tells you that this packer, if you need to set it, you have uh, to run it uh, quarter turn to the left. Quarter turn to the left at 12,000 feet, uh, since you have to, to turn the whole completion, then from the surface, maybe you have to make 12 turns to end up quarter turn at 12,000 feet or so. Uh, we prefer a, a, a hydraulic set packer, actually. It's much, much, much easier. But this packer, once you set it, you can retrieve it any time by overpulling. The manufacturer of this packer tells you that to, to unset it, you have to make over pull uh, 65,000 pounds. So from the brick floor, you pull 65,000. Then you will shear the releasing pins. This is the other sets. It says releasing pins. The releasing pins are sheared. You can pull out the hole. But this packer can be retrieved. You can sit it any time. But to, to set it again, you have to take it all the way up because you need to change the, 
uh, rubber element, you, you need to do full maintenance, put shearing new shear panels, and then you can run it again. Uh, sometimes when we when we set when we unset the pack and packer is unset, then we start pulling out the hole. While pulling out the hole, sometimes we notice that there is an increase in the weight indicator of the control cap. This increase in weight. What message it tells me? It tells me that I have to stop. This increase in weight means that this rubber element for the packer I just released, it is still inflated. So while pulling out of the hole, it touches the ID of the casing, making this resistance, which I can see it, I can see it on the on the weight indicator as a weight. So you have to stop for an hour or so, allowing this rubber element to deflate, to relax. So you can pull out of the hole. And while pulling, of, while pulling out of the hole, you have to stretch your speed. Why? Because when you release the, the packer, unset the pack, you start pull out of the hole, the gap between the ID of the casing and the OD of the rubber element is little. So if you pull out of the hole too fast, you are making swabbing. This damage your, your weller. So you have to restrict your speed to minimize the swabbing. Uh, Which one is better, retrievable packer or permanent pack? Uh, I cannot answer this question <laughs> because it depends on the application. Which is better, four by two car or four by four car? It depends. In desert, four by four is better, of course. But if I'm using it in black tops, I will tell you four by two, it's much cheaper. And uh, maintenance is less. Uh, and uh, the spare parts is less. So it depends on what application you are using it for. So uh, uh, we use, uh, uh, what's the advantage of the permanent packer? It resists high pressure, high temperature, high differential pressure. That's why I use this type of packer, permanent packer, in, uh, in gas wells, high pressure wells, high temperature wells, because it resists that. Uh, I use a retrieval packer in completion where I know that I will change it frequently, like uh, wells with high concentration of H2S, uh, CO2 uh, completion, that I know that I might change it uh, from uh, self-flow or natural flow to artificial lift. So I use retrieval. Of course, we have some other types of packer. We have what we call permatrieve packer, for example. A permatrieve packer, it is... Uh, uh, a retrievable packer, but it has the advantage of the permanent packer. But this is not the course to talk about. Uh, let me go back to the permanent packer. Now, this is our casing. And this is the packer that we run, oh, this is, sorry, this is our pack. This is our packer. Now we are running the completion. This is the tubing seal assembly where it enters the packer. By doing this, you decrease the ID of the packer. Decreasing the ID of the packer will make restriction to the flow. If this is a problem for you, then from the design phase, we will use something else. On top of the permanent packer, we will use what we call BBR, Polish bore receptacle. Polish bore receptacle. 
So if this is my pack, I will attach to it from on top of it, this device, which is bigger in ID, we call it BBR. And this ID is very smooth, Polish board, seal board. And then when I run the tubing seal assembly, I will not run it inside the pack. I will run it inside the BBR. I will set it in the BBR, which is above the pack. By doing this, I didn't reduce the ID of the pack. So you have the full bore of the pack. This is the purpose, the purpose of the PBR that we put on top of the pack. Uh, the permanent pack, to summarize what we, we said, yeah, resist high pressure, high temperature. You run it independently. Once you set it, it became integral part of the casing. Once it's set and retrieved by milling on. I can set it hydraulically or electrically with E-line, as we said. This is the shear stud. Here is the spelling of the shear stud. Shear stud will prevent running tool from being released before completion. And the tailpipe excess weight will prevent the correct setting as you're going to set it in different depths, actually, due to the elongation of the line. Uh, we can use BBR on top of it uh, if required. When we talk about impairment pack, we, can, we run it with the completion, we sit it hydraulically by applying pressure inside the tubing or mechanically by rotation. Retrieved by overpull and shearing, release pulls. Set it, we can set it in tension and compression, and we set it by shearing sitting pulls. So we have two types of pins this time. Here is the, uh, this is the packer. And if we put on top of the packer PBR, and we need to run tubing seal assembly, attached above, PBR attached above a permanent packer and has a stroke length to reciprocate receptacle, the tubing seal assembly to compensate the tubing movement, as we said induced by temperature change during production of injection. Uh, here, we will see that how we space it out. If we look here, did you see that? This is the BBR. And now we are running the completion. The last part, which is tubing cell assembly, it will enter. You see, it goes all the way in. If it goes all the way in, this well is production or injection. It is an injection. The seal assembly should be placed at the bottom of the stroke. Why? Because when you pump water, you are cooling the, the tubing, so it will shrink. So there is a space to go up and still inside. But here, in this example, let us run the tubing seal assembly now. It's halfway. Halfway, this is production well. This is production. We put it at the middle of the stroke. The fourth group, which we call it uh, anti-erosion devices, where we have blast joint and flow coupling. The blast joints, if you remember last time we said this is the yellow, you see, this is the yellow part here in this completion. We put it in exactly in front of the formation. So while producing from the well, what comes out of the formation, it's hydrocarbons, high velocity with sand. This sand will hit the OD of the pipe. It will erode it, sand blasting. This external erosion to prevent. So we use a pipe with a heavy wall thickness, so it will resist more, it will last longer. And instead of having these holes in the pipe in, in four or five months, you might have these holes in two, three, four years. 
And I said, if you remember, sometimes we use the same thickness, but different material, higher grade material, like tungsten carbide and or ceramic. Uh, so the, the blast joint is to prevent, the, uh, to resist the external corrosion. Erosion. El flow coupling, it is the same, it's a short pipe. Here in this example, the flow coupling is the yellow color, where we attach it to the pipe, production tubing, which is brown color. If you notice, the ID of the production tubing is the same as the ID of the flow coupling. The only difference is the OD. The OD of the flow coupling is bigger because of the wall thickness. But the flow coupling is mainly to resist the internal erosion, not the external erosion. Uh, what you see here illustrated, what is here in the middle, this is any device you put like SSD, any device used, any accessories used, it, it, normally it has uh, an ID less than the production. So it will be a restriction for the flow. The flow, while coming out from the uh, from the pay zone, going through the production tubing upward, it goes laminar flow. Laminar flow, uh, like you have a road, which is four lanes, you have four cars in the four lanes. So these four cars has no problem with each other. But when they reach an accident on the road, so the first two lanes are occupied. So now you have four cars need to go in two lanes only. Which two of these cars goes into the lane, in these two lanes? In our country, for example, <laughs> who is brave enough to put the nose of his cars first. So people fight. Exactly, flow do the same, it fights. So, uh, <laughs> Now the flow is going up, laminar flow. Now you have a restrictions. Who, which, which part goes first? Then they start to fight. Then the flow would turn from laminar flow to turbulent flow. A turbulent flow move in, in waves. These waves in this, in this shape, it, then you will have uh, in, internal erosion on the metal itself. That's why we put the flow coupling to resist the internal erosion. Then they go inside the accessory, laminar flow. Then when they go up, out of the accessories, this part, high pressure wells, which mean high velocity wells, they will start having turbulent flow. They need to move fast in this space. So that's why sometimes in high pressure wells, we put them upstream and downstream. Last thing in the completion, we call it wireline entry guide. I don't like the name because uh, they call it wireline entry guide because the wireline is invented before it's called tube. If the call tubing were invented before the wireline, I believe its name will be call tubing entry guide. The uh, wireline or the slick line, to be precise in what I'm saying, the slick line is invented back in 1932. While the call tubing, the first call tubing unit we have on Earth, uh, it was 30 years later, it was in 1962. So uh, actually, it's an entry guide to anything that you run through the production tubing, you enter the open hole, and you need to go back. We have two main types of wireline entry guide. We have this one, we call it Melushu, and we have this one, we call it Bill type, because it, 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 its profile is like a bill. Each one of them has an advantage, disadvantage. That's why we have these two types. So you select what suits your operation. Uh, for example, if you are running a, 
accomplished in, in, in heavy deviated wells, then the end of the tubing is on, 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 the, on the low side of the well. Then if, if you run tools, you need to go back into the production tubing. You, you need a device with a big mouth. So the build type is better for you in this case because it has this big mouth. So you be sure that tools that goes out, it will go back. Uh, in middle shoe, this is the green color here. This is the middle shoe, but it's upside down. The way I put it upside down, because I need you to see what's inside. Uh, this is the end. And if you notice, it is chamfered, 45 degree. So when tools comes out, you need to go back. Uh, it's, there is no sharp edges. There is a 45 degree, so it will slip over and go inside. When it goes inside, if you notice here, I have another edge here. This is the end of the connection because this uh, wireline integrate, I thread it into the production tubing. So you have this edge of the thread at the end. Uh, if it is 90 degree, the tool that you run it back, it will stuck in this edge. So we chamfer this well. If you notice, it is 45 degree as well. So it will slip over and continue going into the tube. I know that I'm, 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 uh, I am canceling some uh, slides because as I said, this is not a well intervention course indeed, yeah, but it's introduction to it. So, and time is limited, so I have to escape from some slides here. Uh, tubing hanger. The tubing hanger, which is on surface, it hangs the top of completion, we agreed, because the bottom completion is hanged by the pack. What you see here, this is the tubing hanger, and this is the tubing head. The tubing hanger goes inside the tubing head. Uh, the tubing hanger, it is to hang a top completion. The tubing hanger does not hold any casing. It doesn't hold the upper casing or lower casing or middle casing. The tubing hanger from its name hang a top of completion only. And it has seals, as you notice here, this black lines here. Uh, these black lines, it is rubber elements that make the seal to prevent the leakage from tubing to annulus or annulus to tubing. And it has a profile inside here to set a plug, we call it DVV, back pressure valve, and it works as a barrier. And uh, if you notice here, there is a groove or a channel. Any idea what for this hole through the body of the tubing hanger? Any idea what this for? I will see if I can have any answer. A question say, uh, Parman said, can any damage occurs to the Parker material at any stage? Uh, the Parker material can be damaged, of course. Uh, it's life. The life of everything on Earth the curve is going down. No life on Earth is like that or goes up. Everything goes down. So, of course, it is limited by the, uh, the environment that you put it in. H2S, CO2, acids, uh, of course, it will be affected by that. But if you mean that a damage that can happen during running or pulling, I, I don't see that. Fatima said, why? I don't know. Why? Where is the question? You said, why? Why what? Please let me know why what? And I can answer your question. Uh, ah, I didn't get an answer. 
why uh, why we have this hole this hole actually is is this what is this we run this in this hole this is this is a stainless steel tube quarter inch in size in size we use this so we can open and close the down hole safety valve we we use this stainless steel tube that connect the control panel or the pump high pressure pump at the surface with the downhole safety valve with the landing nipple of the downhole valve which is 200 300 feet below so we can pump this fluid with pressure to open and close the downhole safety valve Well, here on Christmas tree. Although I'm a mechanical engineer, and although I worked with international firms since the beginning of my career, but I spent some good years in the field under the impression that uh, well hit and Christmas tree are the same. What is this? It's a Christmas tree. Can I call it well head? Of course you can call it well head. It's the same meaning. Till the day I discovered that I am wrong. There is a difference. Engineering wise, the well head is the components of casing hungers, casing hits. Tubing hunger, tubing head. Where? On top of that, we put a Christmas tree. The Christmas tree is a body with, the, with some valves that, that control the production of the well. And the connection between the Christmas tree and the well head, we call it THF. THF stands for tubing head flange. So based on that, you see this red arrow, anything below is a well head. Anything above is a Christmas tree. This is a typical uh, picture of uh, a well where we cut it to see what's inside. And this is most probably what you will see. This is the total depth of the well. And this is the hole we are making. And uh, to reach this pay zone, hydrocarbon zone that we need. And uh, some people, especially people who are not petroleum engineers yet, they ask me, uh, Ahmed, why you have different casing? Why you have uh, uh, surface casing, intermediate casing, uh, production casing, sometimes liner? Uh, you need to drill a hole seven inch? Okay, no problem make a whole seven inch all the way to 10,000 feet, then run one casing, seven inch casing. Then I laugh because you cannot do that. If you go to the beach, you start playing with your kids by the beach to make this, to dig in the soil, in the sand. When you have a hole, one feet maybe or more, what will happen to this hole? It will collapse. <laughs> this is two feet tall, not 10,000 or 20,000 feet tall. Huh? So, of course, we cannot that. There is so many reasons, Yanni, to, to have this drill on, on, on many stages. And each stage we drill, we have to protect it by this casing. Uh, one of the reasons, actually, if, if you notice here, we have here what we call surface water zone. 
you don't need this water zone to interfere with your hydrocarbon. So you have to, to protect your well from this water zone, undesired water zone. Many, many actually difference why we have these different cases, uh, casing sizes uh, up till we reach the bottom, the day zone where we produce from. Uh, what you, you see here, this is a wellhead. This is a compact wellhead. This is the new design wellhead where all components of casing hungers, casing heads, tubing hunger, tubing head are in one body. We use the, this technology in, uh, in offshore and subsurface application, subsea. Uh, in the past, when we use, uh, when we drill offshore, then we have what we call platform. It is a huge steel structure. You can see it on top of the water, all the way to the seabed, uh, where we have uh, our production facilities and Christmas trees. And uh, We don't do that now. Everything on the seabed. So when we have everything on the seabed, we care about heights. Otherwise, the ships while sailing will not hit our wellheads platform. So this technology is new technology. We use it subsea application, which is terrific. But nothing is for free. You have to pay. I don't mean money, actually, but uh, you have to pay something. I'll show you something. I might have it here. Yes. What I have here, these are two E lines. These two E lines are from the same manufacturer, are the same size, they are the same construction. But you see one is shiny and one is not. This one is shiny, right? This one is not. If you ask me why, I'll tell you this one is H2S resistance. So this one has an advantage over this one. This one is not H2S resistance. But can you tell that this one is better? Of course not. I cannot tell that. This is nice. This is better when you deal with H2S. Yes. If you are going for fishing, I don't recommend that. You recommend this. To make this one shiny, to make this one H2S resistance, I mean, yeah. this one has to pay. It has to pay half of its tensile strengths, which means at the end, this one, which is shiny because it's H2S service, this one, its tensile strength is half this one. This is what I'm saying by there is nothing in life for free. Any advantage you need to take, you have to pay for it. So this compact wellhead is, is fantastic. What's the disadvantage? If any damage happened to any part of it, me and you cannot even touch it. You have to take it, kiss it, put it beside the wall. The only one who can deal with it is the manufacturer. But if you use the conventional one, the composite Christmas tree, which is which consists from modules, starting from the surface casing head. This is a surface casing head, where inside it we put the surface casing hunger. This is the brown that holds the weight of the surface casing, which is yellow. Then on top of that, you put the production casing head. This is the production casing head, where you put inside it production casing hunger. This is the production casing hunger, the brown color that holds the production casing, which is green. On top of that, you put tubing head. The tubing head you put on top, where you put tubing hunger inside to hang a production tube. This is the wellhead. This is tubing head flange, where on top of that, you put the Christmas tree. 
the Christmas tree is the components of valves that control the well. Uh, if we talk from last below, the bottom here, this is LMV, lower master valve. This is not a working valve. I always say that if you are in the field and you see someone who is going to close the lower master valve, tell him, please come. Don't do that again. This is your last resort. If you keep using it, you spoil it. So you keep it. What you use actually is the upper muscle valve. The upper muscle valve is either pneumatic or hydraulic, and we agreed that some of them actually can cut the wire. Not all of them. I didn't discuss that at the beginning, actually. Uh, I always ask people, uh, which one of these valves have the cutting capability? that cuts the slick line. Normally, we put this cutting capability in the upper muscle valve because it's pneumatic and hydraulic. The power of cutting is much, much bigger than cutting by your hand. So normally, we put this cutting capability in the upper muscle valve. Uh, then uh, we have the flowing valve, which allows flow to go to the production facility. And then we have the choke valve. The choke valve, it, it, it controls the fluid or the flow, uh, no flow, full flow, half flow, three-quarter flow, and so on. And between this check valve and this flowing valve, I am missing a valve here. This comes there. This valve here, I'm supposed to add, we call it SSV, surface safety valve. Some of you guys, we call it in the field actuator. Fine to me but the engineering name is SSV, surface safety valve. On the other hand of the Christmas tree, I have what we call killing valve. We use this for killing operation. This is supposed to be uh, directed to uh, through a uh, high pressure treating uh, line to a killing pump, so we can kill the wheel from. Uh, some Christmas tree doesn't have this valve, and instead they have a blind flange, and then when they kill a well, they kill it from the top, from the suave valve. Uh, on top, I have what we call a suave valve, a crown valve. This has nothing to do with the production of it. This is mainly to use when dealing with the well intervention, running, rigging up or rigging down wire line or prism or cold tubing or stuff. It has nothing to do with the production. What uh, cuts the production of what uh, shut off the well is valves in the direction of the flow, which is the lower muscle valve, the upper muscle valve, the flowing valve, the SSV, and the tube. Oh, one hour already. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'll go five minutes, another five minutes, and I'll stop. This is the Christmas tree. Now, you are a, a call tubing guy, and uh, we need to rig up our call tubing unit on this Christmas tree. No, let us see that we are a wireline. I have a point. You are a wire, wire line crew, you need to dig up on this Christmas tree. So one of your crew, he went up because he has to remove this cap to put his crossover and then start rigging his BOB and lubricator. And so when he went there, he noticed that this pressure gauge on top is not working. This pressure gauge is not working. So what he did, he closed the needle valve here. He took this gauge out. He put his hand in his pocket. He get a new gauge. He put it on, Open the needle valve. The pressure gauge is working. So he, he continued his mission. I need to put full stop here because what he did is a fatal mistake. Why he did a fatal mistake? because he didn't inform his team. 
He is not working alone. He is working in a team. So the team has to know what is he doing. If we are five in the field as a crew, each one is doing whatever he likes to do. This is not a team, right? So he has to inform his supervisor. And by the way, his supervisor, he will tell him exactly what he did, but he has to know. Uh, if we are doing call tubing job, we will not take this cab out. We have to take this flange out because in call tubing, all our connection above the Christmas tree has to be flange to flange. We don't use threads. So uh, we have to take this flange out. And by the way, when taking these flanges, we have to disconnect these uh, stock bolts and nuts, right? Each nuts we take out, you kiss it and put it in the basket, in the garbage. Don't use it again. Uh, don't cry, but this is, this is what API. One time use. Even the ring gasket. Where is my ring gasket? Even this, this is the ring gasket. It is one time use. Once you use it, after you finish your job, kiss it, put it on the, on the garbage, one time use. Any flange, any API flange, we identify it by two things. We identify it by size and pressure. So when I say this flange is 918, 5,000 PSI, this means that this flange has an ID of 918 and a working pressure of 5,000 PSI. This is how we identify a flange. You have to identify it by two things, by size related to ID and pressure related to working. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, I'm done with the completion. Uh, let me see if I have any questions here. Uh, 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 how do we know when a valve on a Christmas tree is compromised or faulty? Uh, any, uh, any production company, they have an agreement with a service company where this service company has to do a periodic maintenance for the Christmas tree, where they uh, clean the Christmas tree, uh, where they grease the valves, where they pressure test it. And uh, before we do a job, we, we do what we call integrity test to the Christmas tree, where we test the valves. Uh, the Christmas tree valves are desi designed in such a way that they can withstand pressure from both sides. That's why when you close the swap valve against the well pressure, the swap valve now, it resists the pressure coming from below. But when you rig up, Chris, when you rig up a wireline or a call tubing, and you need to test the call tubing equipment or wireline equipment, you test it by applying pressure on top of the swap valve. In this case, the swap valve resists pressure from top as well. This is how the, the, the swap valve is designed for, to withstand pressure from both sides. The uh, lower master valve and the upper master valve is the same. They are designed to withstand pressure from both sides. But how you recognize it is either by your visual inspection, you see droplets of liquids coming out, or by the periodic pressure test you make. Good evening, sir. I would like to know if well simulation is a well intervention method. <laughs> no, a well, a well simulation is, the, is a science, is, is the, a way that you have uh, uh, wells and uh, jobs you do on, 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 your, on a laptop or a software that it can simulate what happens. But a well intervention is a, is a practice, but is 
is the real equipment, real people that do the job in the field. While the well simulation you do it uh, in a air conditioned room with software and laptop. This is, I believe this is the difference between both here. Dr. Ahmed, I'm ready, I'm ready to, to jump from the ship. Engineer Ahmed, thank you very much for the lecture. And for sure, we will see you again on uh, Sunday.